Other news tonight, another slice of pizza and politics coming at you right now. Democratic mayoral candidate Scott Stringer, the current comptroller of New York City, sitting down with um, our News 12's Christy Reader, explaining why he says he's ready on day one. With me today, Democratic candidate Scott Stringer, running for mayor. We're outside. Ready for some pizza? I'm ready. I heard that you like mushrooms. I do. Yeah, I am a huge mushroom fan, too. Perfect. Why, uh, why is this your favorite? Growing up in Washington Heights, I think for an extra 15 cents, you could get mushrooms, and that's how it started. Now, Mayor yeah. de Blasio said I should have a knife and fork. Did you bring that? You just <laughs> need a mayor who knows how to eat pizza. How has the campaign been going? It's good. It's good. It's been crazy, but it's good. Talk about campaigning and being hard. Um, you were accused of sexual harassment by a former uh, campaign volunteer. This was, you know, from back in 2001, and you have denied it. Could you be, please explain? First of all, the person who made the claim, uh, I respect her right to come forward. Uh, but from the very beginning, uh, there have been inconsistencies in the facts. Those are not true allegations. And uh, she was a friend. We had an existing relationship. Like all my friends, she volunteered in the campaign. It's unfortunate, but the facts do not support what she says. And so all I can do is go directly to the voters uh, and talk about something that happened 20 years ago. But look, at the same time, I think people want to hear about the issues in the campaign. What are we going to do in the Bronx about affordable housing? How are we going to educate children? And uh, I think that's the focus now in the next couple of weeks. I've answered all these questions time and time again, and I'll continue to do so. But I think the real issues now are what's going to happen to the city. Do you feel like it's uh, hurt your credibility for the voters? No, because people have a right and should be heard, women in particular. But you also have to have facts, and you have to come forward with verification, and uh, that has not happened. You want to transform how we police here in New York City, so how are you going to do it? What are your ideas? Well, we need to recognize that the crime is up, shootings are up. Uh, we're seeing very dangerous spikes, and the way to deal with that is to focus police on what they're good at, which is finding the people call who are root the shootings. The bureaucracy at one police plaza has grown by 76%. It's now $300 million, basically, to just continue a worn-out bureaucracy. We should take some of that money and put it into the precincts. But as part of policing, we also look at prevention. And that's why I want to take some of these savings and move it into violence interrupter programs, mentor programs. You've seen some of the, the commercials run, the ads that you have. You know, we see vacant lots. So what are you going to do? You know, I see them too. What are your plans for turning well, that? that? If anyone's watching that commercial, I take the kids on a tour of New York City and I show them the vacant lots and we're running around and they're like, why is dad showing us vacant lots? Most kids get to see football games or basketball <laughs> games. Our dad likes to go to vacant lots and imagine what they could be. So what could they be? real affordable housing, not housing that is called affordable housing, but is really unaffordable. And that's what those city-owned vacant lots were all about, because we, the people, own those lots. Our tax dollars go to maintaining those lots. There's thousands of them. And I want to take the lots that we could use to build low-income housing, I want to give those lots to community-based organizations. Marijuana, how would you help New York City benefit with this? Well, look, the the reality is that we are going to see hundreds of millions of dollars in new tax revenue because of cannabis, but we also have to talk about something that has to be at the forefront, and that's called cannabis equity. So right now, if the end of the game here is that the same big companies end up controlling the cannabis market, that would be a mistake because I believe that we need to right some wrongs along the way. Next slice time. One word to describe your first term if you were to win. Transformative. Favorite sports team? The New York Jets. I can explain. Joe okay. Namath, 1969 Jets. Last concert before COVID. I couldn't tell you the last concert, but yeah. it, it's definitely a recital or something with my kids. Your last pitch to voters. I'm ready on day one uh, to bring the city back.